Hey everybody, Ryan Jackson here. I hope you're having a great day. We're going to talk about section 210.70 today, which covers your required lighting outlets. Uh, we're going to stick in 210.70a, which is dwelling units. Nothing really happened in 210.70b uh, or c. So this is the rule that tells you where you have to have a lighting outlet. Right? So yeah, you got to have a lighting outlet in the kitchen and in the bathroom and in the bedrooms and in the laundry area, right? We added laundry area in the 2023. Well, as is often the case, when you add a new rule, three years later, you have to come back and fix it. And that's what we had here. So we'll take a look at what we did here in Article 210, Branch Circuits 210.70, Required Lighting Outlets. The language regarding batteries was removed, laundry illumination was clarified, and switches were added back into the section. All right, 210.70, Lighting Outlets. This has been in the code for forever, right? Lighting outlets must be provided in accordance with 210.70A through C. A talks about dwelling units, and that's where the changes happen. So in dwelling units, lighting outlets are required in accordance with 210.70A1 and A2. A1 talks about your bathrooms, habitable rooms, kitchens, and laundry areas. At least one lighting outlet controlled by a listed wall-mounted control device or switch must be provided in habitable rooms, kitchens, bathrooms, and laundry areas. Okay, so <laughs> sometimes we go back and forth on these things. For years, it said that you have to have a wall switch controlled lighting outlet in these rooms, right? That's what it said for decades. And then in the 2023, we came out and said, wait a minute. It doesn't necessarily have to be a wall switch. It could be a listed wall mounted control device. Because remember, a switch is where you make and break contact, right? Uh, where you make and break contact for the load. If I have a control device that doesn't actually make and break contact, but tells something else to make and break contact, well, then that's not a switch. And you can now buy devices that are basically lick and stick, right? You, you peel off the little sticky thing and you can stick them wherever you want. And then you can program, you can program them to talk to the real switches in your house. And this little lick and stick wireless control device will control your illumination. But it's not a switch because it didn't make and break contact. It told the switch to make and break contact, right? So we added language saying, okay, you don't need switches. You need a listed wall mounted control device. Well, in the 2026, we came back and said, well, you can use a switch, obviously, or you can use a wall-mounted control device. We're not trying to preclude you from using a switch. Right, obviously. I mean, of course, I think we knew that's what it meant, but now it says wall-mounted control devices or switch. Either way, they took out this language, which I think is good. Uh, switches or wall-mounted control device must not rely on a battery unless the loss of battery power energizes the lighting outlet. This was a big debate, right? And I mean, talk about much ado about nothing. But when this battery dies, should the lights turn on or should the lights turn off? On one side, you said, hey, if the, if the battery goes dead, we gotta have lights, right? You gotta, you gotta see what's going on. But then it's like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> This isn't, it, it's a, we're not talking about a house here. It, it, we don't need emergency lighting. It's not like it's a massive arena or something where if the lights go out, people could die, you know, and not find the exits. It's a house. If you can't th find your way out of the bedroom in the dark, I mean, come on. You also had the, uh, the installation community, right? The labor community saying, listen, we don't want this thing turning on by itself. Because what if we're changing the light and it's off, then we're in the middle of changing the light and all of a sudden it turns on and we get shocked. Well, the argument to that was, well, you're supposed to use lockout, tag out. You should have shut off the breaker, locked out the breaker, verified absence of power, checked your meter on a known voltage source, live dad life test. Okay, we all know that the breaker should be locked. I, we know that, right? Let's just be realistic here. I think, I think in residential, a lot of people are going to turn off the switch and rely on the switch as the disconnecting means and maybe put a piece of tape over it. I'm not saying that's what you should do. I'm just saying that's what a lot of people choose to do, right? So 
the people were saying, well, uh, you know, what if it turns on while you're working on it? What, what are the odds of that happening? One in a million? I mean, come on. So we just said, you know what? There's not a perfect answer. If we say the battery should fail on, people are going to be upset. If we say the battery should fail off, people are going to be upset. So let's just not even touch the issue. And I think that was probably the right move. The control device or switch must be located near an entrance to the room. We never cared about switch location. That was always a design issue, right? Not a safety issue, but a design issue. I don't care if your light switch is close to the door, 30 feet away from the door. I don't care. I don't care if it's in your attic, right? Where you put your switch is your problem. Until we allowed wireless control devices. Because think about it. What would stop a person from not having any switches in their house and just have one wireless control device, and maybe you name it Alexa or something like that, and you mount it like in your living room, and that's the only place to control any lights in the house. I mean, I know that's kind of a dumb design, but people would do it, right? There are people who will follow the absolute minimum code to save a couple of bucks. So when they added the allowance for wireless control devices, we had to specify a location. So we want it to be near an entrance to the room. Okay. In other than kitchens, laundry areas, and bathrooms, receptacles that are controlled by a listed wall-mounted device or switch are allowed instead of lighting outlets. So yeah, you can still use switched receptacles, right? But you can't use a switched receptacle in lieu of lighting in the kitchen, laundry, or bathroom. In the living room like we have in the picture, in a bedroom, be my guest. Switch receptacles, plug in a lamp, you're good. We also have exception number two, Occupancy sensors installed at a customary wall switch location may control the lighting outlets as long as they have a manual override setting. Okay, so we use occupancy sensors mainly in commercial, right? And in commercial, we usually put them on the lid, right? So they can kind of see the whole room. Well, in residential, you can use occupancy sensors, but we don't want them up on the ceiling. They got to be at a customary wall switch location, all right? Because maybe I like occupancy sensors, but once I sell my house, the next person that buys it, maybe they hate occupancy sensors and they're going to replace it with a regular switch or some other sort of control device. So we need to have it at a customary wall switch location and you have to be able to disable the, the uh, occupancy sensor switch on it. We added a new exception here, which I think is a good thing. For laundry areas, the illumination and its control may be located outside of the laundry area if the laundry equipment is in a closet. All right, so if you look back up at the title, this used to say bathrooms, habitable rooms, and kitchens. And then in the 2023 code, we added laundry areas. Well, the laundry area needs illumination, right? It needs a lighting outlet. And you have to have a point of control near the lighting, near the laundry equipment. But what if your laundry equipment is one of these stackable things and it's just in a little closet, right? Off the hallway of the, of the house. Do you really need to have a lighting outlet in that closet? And by the way, what would it even do? What good would it do? It's probably going to be above the dryer you turn it on and it doesn't even illuminate anything. All it would do is just add heat and maybe even be a source of a fire hazard. So we made a nice allowance saying, listen, eh, if, if you have a little closet for your laundry, who cares? You don't need a light. The, the hallway illumination is probably going to be good enough. Now, this example that I have here, of course, is not in a closet. It's in a bathroom or maybe it's in a laundry or maybe it's both. And therein lies one of the problems here where we get too specific with the code sometimes we paint ourselves into a corner um, can the bathroom lighting outlet serve as the laundry lighting outlet give me a break i got a million problems in my life this ain't one of them come on i am passing this every time right well it's not in a closet ryan come on you know sometimes we just need to use our brains a little bit does it satisfy what we're trying to do here? We want a light where people are doing the laundry. If you have it, walk away. Whether it's in a closet or not, come on. You know, let's throw these people a bone here. This is obviously safe, and that's what we care about. 
All right, so there you go. We made it through Article 210. Article 210 is always huge, right? Article 210 is, is not only one of the largest, but one of the most important articles in the entire code book. And when I'm doing a code change class, when I teach like an eight-hour seminar, I don't think I've ever gotten through Article 210 in less than one hour. I mean, there is always so much to talk about in Article 210, and this year is no exception, right? GFCIs, AFCIs, required receptacles, 210.52, the required lighting outlets in 210.70. There's always a ton to talk about in Article 210, but guess what? We're finished with it now. We're going to jump into Article 225 next, and a change that, it's pretty big, man. It, it's actually a really big change, and it's not without its problems. So we're gonna look at 225.31 in the next video. I hope you'll join me then, and in the meantime, I do hope that you'll be safe and be well. Thanks, everybody.